Well, hi there, boys and girls. Today we're going to take a look at Taylor polynomials and approximations. And um, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to grab our calculator and we're going to graph two things. And we're going to graph sine of x and we're going to graph this polynomial x minus x cubed over 3 factorial plus x to the fifth over 5 factorial. Polynomial is just a polynomial with a bunch of x's on two powers separated by minus and plus signs. And they can be used to approximate functions, transcendental functions, sine, e to the x, natural log, things like that. So what we're going to do is we're going to take a look at these. And so let's head out there. So I've got sine in my y1 and y2 in a different style, if you hit second F1, in a different style, I've got this Taylor polynomial thick. So you're going to see the difference between the two. So we're going to graph these. And of course, there's your sine of x graph. And the second graph is going to be that polynomial. And as you can see, if we stay close to zero, we are the polynomial is almost directly on top of sine of x. For out to about almost 2 before they separate and out to about negative 2 before they separate. So Taylor, po oh, I'm graphing too much stuff there. Sorry about that. I had some other things going on. I meant to turn those off. That's for later. We're going to turn that one off for now. Anyway, so let's go back and see that again. There's our sine graph. And then here's the x minus x cubed over 3 factorial plus x to the fifth over 5 factorial. So they can be used to approximate things, and that's what we're going to use them for. The first thing we have to do is we have to figure out how to build these things. And so we've got a definition here. Our definition of an nth degree Taylor polynomial, if it has n derivatives at c, then this polynomial is called the nth degree Taylor polynomial for f at c, named after Brooke Taylor, an English mathematician. And if the c works out to be 0, then if we replace all those c's with 0, we get something special called a Maclaurin polynomial, named after Colin Maclaurin. So it's just a special name for a Taylor polynomial. So let's just get started here, and let's find the Maclaurin polynomial of degree n equals 5 for f of x equals sine of x. So I'm going to show you the notation we're going to use. We're going to say p sub 5 of x. Notice that the n is the degree, so we replace the 5 right there for our n. p sub 5 of x for a Maclaurin is going to be f of 0 plus f prime of 0 times x plus f double prime of 0 over 2 factorial times x squared. And I know that's weird to write 2 factorial because 2 factorial is 2 times 1, which is just 2, but we write the factorial to see the pattern and then plus the third derivative at 0 over 3 factorial times x cubed. And now, once we start getting out past the triple derivative, or the third derivative, we're just going to put parentheses up here, and we're going to say 4. That stands for the fourth derivative of f. That way we don't have to start straining our eyes looking for tick marks times x to the fourth. And then the fifth derivative will be f up here. We'll have parentheses, a little 5. That stands for the fifth derivative over 5 factorial times x to the fifth, and this is of zero. So that is my formula. <coughs> Excuse me. That is my formula. So I need to find these missing pieces of information. It looks like I need to find one, two, three, four, five derivatives, and then plug in zero, and I can have my, my Maclaurin polynomial. Well, what is f of x? f of x is sine of x, so I'm going to do some derivatives. What's f prime? We know f prime, of course, is cosine. Now what about the second derivative? That would be the derivative of cosine, which is negative sine. And then I need the third derivative. I'm going to put an x here. I need the third derivative of x, which is going to be negative cosine of x. I need the fourth derivative of x, which is going to be back to sine, and that's interesting, it takes four derivatives for, on a sine or a cosine function to get back to your original function. And the fifth derivative of x is just back to cosine. So we need to plug in zero for all of these derivatives so that we can find f of zero, f prime of zero, blah, blah, blah. So f of zero is going to equal the sine of zero, which is zero. f prime of zero is going to equal the cosine of zero, which is one. f double prime of 0 is back to 0. The third derivative of 0 is negative cosine of 0, so that's going to be negative 1. The fourth derivative at 0 is going to be 
back to the sine of 0, which is 0, and the fifth derivative at 0 is going to be back to the cosine of 0 or 1. Now that we have all that, we can throw it into our formula. So our formula up here is right here, f of 0 plus f prime of 0 x, blah, blah, blah. So here we go. We can write our Taylor polynomial now. Our fifth degree Taylor polynomial is f of 0, which is 0. I'm not going to write that down plus f prime of 0 is 1, 1 times x is just x. Then plus the second derivative at 0 was 0, so since there's going to be a 0 here, it's going to wipe out that entire term. That entire term is going to go away. And then plus the third derivative at 0 was minus 1. So there's going to be a minus 1 right here, so that's going to be minus x cubed over 3 factorial, and then plus f to the, the fourth derivative of f, which worked out to be, where is it? Oh, well, that's 0 again, so I'm losing these even powers of x. And then my fifth derivative at 0 was a positive 1, so I'll have positive x to the fifth over 5 factorial. Well, that's interesting. That's exactly what I asked us to look at at the very beginning. This is the fifth degree Taylor polynomial. Well, it's really a special Maclaurin polynomial for sine of x, centered at 0. So let's go to our calculator and answer some questions. We want to find the fifth derivatives, sorry, the fifth degree Taylor polynomial's value at 1.4, and we also want to find the value of f of 1.4. And the way we can do that is with our calculator. So we can come back here to our calculator, turn it back on, and if I go to my table, I've already typed this in. If you type in 1.4, the first answer, that's the actual function sine of x, and the second answer is your fifth degree Taylor polynomial's value. So let's let's write those down. I've got 0.98545 for the actual one, and then 0.98749 for the approximation one. So let's write those down. P sub 5 of 1.4, get back to my pen here, P sub 5 of 1.4 was 0.98 eight seven four nine the value of f of 1.4 was point nine eight five four five excuse me <clears throat> what is the error of this approximation the error is the absolute value of the difference between these two so the error that I'm getting here is point zero zero two zero four they're not very far apart out here at 1.4. So the Taylor polynomial does a decent job of approximating the actual value of sine of 1.4. We can calculate p sub 5 of 1.4 by plugging it into the Taylor polynomial. Now, if you did not have a calculator, you would have left your answer like this. You would have said p sub 5 of 1.4 equals 1.4 minus 1.4 cubed over 3 factorial plus 1.4 to the fifth over 5 factorial. That's how you would have left your answer, but with a calculator we can see how close they are. Now let's go back and find what about p sub 5 of 2.1? Well I've plugged that in and so I've got those values here. The actual sine of point uh, 2.1 is 0 0.86321 and our Taylor polynomial is 0 0.86. 89684. So I've, I got that from the calculator. So we'll get back here and write that down. Get back down here to my pen. Alright, so P sub 5 of 2.1 was 0.89684. And the actual value of F of 2.1 was 0.86321. So what is our error? We, we do the absolute value of the difference between these two, and I think I got 0 0.03363. Now what happened to our error? Well, the error for the P sub 5 of 2.1, this is a larger error. Why do you think we got a larger error from the picture? Do you remember that the function and the Taylor polynomial started to separate as we moved away from zero? So if we move further and further away from the center, what do you think is going to happen if we use it to estimate sine of, say, like 2.7? I think the error is going to increase. 
So as you move further from your center, the Taylor polynomial will not be as close to the actual value of the function. All right, so let's write a six-degree Taylor polynomial for f of x equals natural log of x at c equals 1. So let's write the general form for a six-degree Taylor polynomial. We need f of 1 plus f prime of 1 times x minus 1 plus f double prime of 1 over 2 factorial times x minus 1 squared plus, I'm going to write one more term here and just do a dot, dot, dot. The third derivative at 1 over 3 factorial times x minus 1 cubed plus all the way out to the sixth derivative at 1 over 6 factorial times x minus 1 to the 6. I need all of those pieces of information, so we better get started. f of x is the natural log of x. So what is f prime of x? Well, we should know that that's 1 over x, which you can write that as x to the negative 1. What's the second derivative then? If we have x to the negative 1, we bring the negative down, and then it's x to the negative 2. So I'm going to write that as 1 over x squared. The third derivative of x would be, we would bring the negative 2 down, which is going to make it a positive 2, x to the negative 3, or 2 over x cubed. Then the fourth derivative of x is going to equal negative 6 over x to the fourth. And the fifth derivative of x is going to equal 24 over x to the fifth. And then the last derivative, sixth derivative of x, is going to equal negative 120 over x to the sixth. What happened here? We multiplied, we got a 1, and then a 2, and then we ended up with a 6, 24, and 120. Those are factorials. It's like 0 factorial, 1 factorial, 2 factorial, 3 factorial, 4 factorial, 5 factorial. That should make sense because we kept increasing in magnitude our exponents by 1 and we bring it down and multiply so the next one would actually be a 7 factorial over x to the 7th. So let's find all these pieces of information. Let's plug in our 1's. What's f of 1? That's going to be the natural log of 1 which we know is 0 because that's where natural log crosses the x-axis. Now what about f prime of 1? Well that's 1 over 1 which is just 1. f double prime of 1 is going to be negative 1 the third derivative at 1 is going to be 2. The fourth derivative at 1 is going to be negative 6. The fifth derivative at 1 is going to be 24. And then our sixth derivative at 1 is going to be negative 120. So let's plug in our pieces of information. The 6 degree Taylor polynomial for a natural log of x centered at 1 is f of 1 is 0. I'm not going to write that plus 1 times x minus 1. So I'm just going to have an x minus 1 here in parentheses with imaginary 1 in front. Then plus the second derivative at 1, which was actually minus x minus 1 squared over 2 factorial. And then plus the third derivative at 1, which was 2 times x minus 1 cubed over 3 factorial. And then minus 6 x minus 1 to the 4th over 4 factorial plus 24 x minus 1 to the 5th over 5 factorial and then minus 120 x minus 1 to the 6th over 6 factorial. Now if you simplify this you get a nice little pattern for, for natural log centered at 1. x minus 1 minus x minus 1 squared. I'm not going to write the 2 factorial, I'm just going to write it as a 2. Now watch what happens here. 3 factorial is 3 times 2 times 1. So that 2 will cancel the 2 and technically the 1, and I'll have x minus 1 cubed just over 3. Now what happens with the 6? 4 factorial is 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. And the 3, 2, and 1 cancel with the 6, and we get minus x minus 1 to the 4th just over 4. See what's happening here? this coefficient is one less in factorial than the denominator. So it's going to cancel everything but the very first factor. So my next one is x minus 1 to the fifth over 5 and then minus 
x minus 1 to the 6th over 6. That's a e pretty easy pattern to learn. All right, so let's go find some pieces of information. We want to know what is p sub 6 of 1.8. Well, I've already done that, and I got 0.57011. And then f of 1.8 was 0.58779. The error in this approximation is 0 0.01, is that 7, and then a 6, and an 8. Now on your TI-89, let's go take a look at these graphs. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn my calculator on. I'm going to go back to y equals. I'm going to turn off my sine of x graph by hitting f4. You notice the check mark went away. I'll turn off the Taylor polynomial for sine. I'm going to turn on the natural log of x and then also my Taylor polynomial that I just built. And we're going to graph it and let's see what happens here. There's our natural log of x graph. It's got a vertical asymptote of the y-axis, crosses at 1, 0. And then in a thick graph should come my six degree Taylor polynomial. You see how close that is until, boy, something bad happens out here at two. It just completely leaves it. But as long as we stay close to one, we are very, very close. All right, so let's get back here. We're almost done for the day on this Taylor polynomial. And I've tried to go a little bit slower with this. Um, this is a this is a very technical, but if you do your homework and do a lot of practice, you're gonna be able to do this. What do you notice? Well, at x equals 2, um, the, the Taylor polynomial said bye-bye. <laughs> That's going to be very interesting. We're, gonna, we're going to uh, discover why that happened later. Also, your TI-89 has a Taylor command. You can read this here. There's your syntax, and it will build a Taylor polynomial for you so you can check your work tomorrow whenever you're building these. Now, sometimes they don't actually give us the function. They just give us pieces of information information that's funny pieces of information and expect us to build the polynomial so it says write the Taylor polynomial of degree 3 for G centered at 2 so P sub 3 of X third degree Taylor polynomial is going to be since these are G's we'll use G's it's going to be G of 2 plus G prime of 2 times X minus 2 plus G double prime of 2 over 2 factorial times x minus 2 squared and then plus g triple prime of 2 over 3 factorial times x minus 2 cubed. So let's just throw them in. They've already done all the work for us. These questions are sort of easy if you know the formula. g of 2 is 3. g prime of 2 was negative 4 times x minus 2. g double prime of 2 was 7 over 2 factorial times x minus 2 squared and g triple prime of 2 was negative 5 over 3 factorial times x minus 2 cubed. Alright so tomorrow in class we're going to practice this and also some uh, free response review and I will see you guys then.